Hi everyone, Tom Quee here, just doing a quick recap of Don't Flop's Revival 7 event, which went down a few days ago, Saturday the 17th of December. Before we get into the recap though, I just want to say please follow the show, uh, email the show battle.resume at gmail.com, and also a new feature, uh, please help us on Patreon. Uh, battle Up Resume is now on Patreon, we are offering several tiers for donations to help go towards the show. The main one is is the sort of the, uh, the lowest tier, the $1.50, £1 a month, you get access to Resume Review, which is a bonus kind of behind the scenes episode, as well as a another episode maybe more episodes but a guaranteed two extra episodes a month that will only be on patreon so yeah if you want to help the show literally a pound that would be really really appreciated it's crazy actually one of the tiers that i offered um was 150 dollars and i will come out of retirement and battle someone and someone has actually done that which is mad within the first two days and me and the guy joe have been in contact since and he does want to battle me i am going to be battling but i'm going to do a video on that quite soon so look out for that because yeah that's that's fucking mad but um Anyway, Revival 7, I wasn't uh, going to go initially um, for a number of reasons. The main one being that I was in Birmingham for the weekend visiting some friends, kind of classic Christmas, kind of catch-up sort of era. And uh, yeah, I was fucked up on the Friday, maybe about 2am or something like that. And I just thought, like, why am I going to Revival? I'll have tomorrow free. I'm in Birmingham. Manchester isn't that far sort of thing. You know, what? the card isn't exactly what it, what it should have been. But still, it's a fucking don't flop event. You know, it'd be great to see people form, catch a vibe, whatever, just just go down there, so yeah, I bought the ticket, and I was pretty sort of, not like hungover, hungover, but I was pretty tired sort of going down there, I remember when I got into Manchester, after like the sort of three and a half hours, I, mean, I was just like, why am I here, sort of thing, but then I was just thinking, fuck it, you know, I'm going to see Soul versus Koje, so this is all worth it, it was kind of spiriting me through, so I walked down, it was, um, pretty central Manchester, I used to live in Manchester for a year, so it's kind of by the sort of town hall where they have the Christmas market and all that sort of stuff, so it's just around the corner, so it was uh, very, very easy to access, and I got there around 3 o'clock, the doors were opening at 1, so the event had been going to 1, obviously the battles don't start at 1, as we all know, but I thought maybe by getting there at 3, I would have maybe, you know, inadvertently catched a battle or two to begin with and not just be standing around, I was wrong, um, Got down into the venue, um, kind of down some steps, kind of a club area. Interesting venue, actually. When you get down there, wide, wide space that was filled with a, a fair amount of people. Probably like 100, 150 people I was there, you know. Because I guess this was a big sort of Christmas time, jolly sort of event, whatever. And Don't Flop's popping now, you know. So people are going to come down and show support. But um, yeah, got there. And on your left, kind of immediately as you come down the stairs, you know, it's kind of a raised platform with four pillars round, which, you know, will block you and uh, aren't, aren't, aren't the most handy things. And at first, I thought, oh, this is quite a cool environment. You know, everyone was kind of crowded around and you know the people elevated in between you but some flaws came out which we'll get into later which i think affected the battling and you know just the venue didn't really work in that sense to be honest with you maybe some people will dispute that i don't know but personally and kind of the vibe i was getting was it just wasn't exactly conducive to great battle watching it wasn't a bunker or a fiddler's elbow or whatever you know but this is a tv issue i think this is the first time don't have been there maybe they've been there before but whatever you know you've got to experiment with venues and maybe they'll go back next time maybe it'll be good but yeah got there it was like 3 8 3 p.m uh, grabbed a drink, saw a few people, uh, you know, through, that, that, through, like Dom, for example, I've done podcasts with and stuff like that, and kind of, you know, chatting to a few people or whatever, and, um, yeah, 3pm, and Young Guns Fusion comes on and does a set, which is, which is fine, you know, there's a little bit of lethargy in the crowd, not due to him, like, he actually performed really well and sounded great, uh, great energy as well, I think he's got an upcoming headline show, the guy seems to be doing good things, but, um, yeah, I mean, you're left, you're left for battles, aren't you, and, you know, watching a 20-minute set of someone doing music can just get a little bit sort of tiresome, you know, I think there was a lot of delays, we heard that Pedro and P Soldier were kind of two minutes away, and that was like twenty minutes ago, and then they're two minutes away again, and that sort of thing. But you know, th th this does happen. This is this is battle rap. This is don't flop. You know, you can't expect punctuality at all times of the day. After this, we're waiting around. We're thinking maybe a battle's going to start, kind of thing. More people are flooding in. You know, everyone's kind of there. Most of the big heads are there, sort of thing. I actually, saw Soul in the crowd, which again kind of raised my hopes. I was like, oh fucking hell, you know, doesn't matter. I'm seeing Soul Coach yet. You know, that that was the dominant thing. Obviously, I was really looking forward to stuff like uh, JB, Danny Jack. Uh, Frankie Crisis, E. Farrell, Tox, then Dank, you know, those were sort of the ones that personally I was like, yes, yes, but all those didn't fall through, but Soul Code J in my head was still going down. Raptor then performs a set, it was meant to be a battle, but Raptor comes on, Raptor killed it again, again though, just kind of people were sort of vibing through it and, and kind of, you know, waiting to watch battles and, and there was just a sense of, not tension, but it was just like, you know, it's, it's like four o'clock or something by this time and it's like, come on, the door's open at one, but at least give us one battle, you know, at least, at least give us something to watch. And, uh, oh, before Raptor, I should say, Innuendo got on stage and, you know, Innuendo is obviously, you know, giant persona, um, great with interacting with people and even though he was forgetting a lot of his bars, he was pretty fucked, obviously. I think I said on the Twitter that he was like a bar into his third song and he didn't recognise the beat and all 
all that sort of thing. But that ramshackle, lovable nature is part and parcel of what Innuendo is. And he, he did really well. And he definitely got the energy up for the crowd. And then we went into Raptor. Raptor sort of continued that. And then we got into the first battle. And it was quite interesting. Innuendo encouraged everyone to get on the stage at this point. Everyone to take a few steps forward. So what you had was a kind of two-man deep, you know, barrier around Innuendo. And then I, myself, and many other people who were kind of slightly more at the back had to kind of like, you know, tiptoes looking over these people because they are kind of elevated in head. And then the sound was a little bit insulated. He was on a beat. He was on a mic. So it wasn't that difficult here. But in later battles that I'll get into, such as press, as mat- press and matter, this kind of um, this kind of movement inward definitely hampered the sound. I feel. Hopefully, it doesn't affect the, the battles on cam. So yeah, you know, we had uh, waiting for the battles, and we had Young Guns do a set, Innuendo, Rap to do a set, and finally we get Pedro versus Jay Dillon, which was um, I mean, it's exactly what you think, really. It wasn't necessarily the most enjoyable battle. I mean, I have to be honest, the event wasn't that great, and I'm not trying to be harsh. Obviously, I'm a fucking giant Don't Flop fan. Uh, I love the company and all that stuff, but you've got to be objective, you know. I mean, it wasn't next in line. It wasn't a eighth birthday pre party. The last two events that I've been to a Don't Flop, you know, it wasn't really on that par, and of course, it's not really got the prestige either, you know, um, to a certain extent, but regardless, there, there were some good battles here, and Pedro J. Dillon, I mean, J. Dillon wins. J. Dillon had some good stuff here, you know, um, kind of typical Pedro personality stuff. He's ripped so many shirts, we forget the EMCs and stuff like that. You know, nice homonyms galore as I said kind of thing from 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 Jay Dillon here and um Pedro he was fine I don't you know this was very much not the most exciting Pedro performance that we've seen it definitely didn't set anything alight you know Pedro and Vesaurus they're both great freestylers and they both read off their phone during their opponent's rounds and it was interesting I was kind of behind Pedro and he got his phone out and it just this, looking at his phone obviously I couldn't make out what the bars were it was too big it's just a giant block of text you know this is endless stream of multis that I'd love to sort of uh, sit down and read but yeah it was fine they both had good seconds I think especially and there was some good energy and this won't disappoint anyone there wasn't any judging I don't think but I've definitely got Dylan winning um, I think Jay Dylan was stepping up quite a bit from past performances here and, and, and really delivered and he has quite an interesting uh, quite a powerful presence on stage he always closed his eyes he's got his legs sort of aft in a power position yeah, it was it was fine. I mean, the crowd weren't kind of you know too popping with it to be honest, but 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 it was fine. And then we went straight into the next battle, um, P Soldiers versus Spit Semis, which was um, a bit of a snooze fest, really. To be honest with you, I don't think either of them were at their best. Spit Semis comes from the WOCs, and you can kind of tell. I mean, there were some okay bars, but then there's just kind of this. I'm not really sure what the mentality is to do really, really long, obvious schemes, especially schemes about fruit, um, which, you know, we've heard a fuck ton. Like, like, I don't think there's any need for that. And, yeah, you know, even in a water fight, I'll bring a 45. Peace Soldier's always good for a couple of lines here and there, but he seemed a little nonplussed. The crowd weren't really rocking with it. It's, it Peace Soldier choked as well. Um in the second kind of kind of badly and and spits his second didn't choke but i remember him just getting like no reactions compared to his first it was just again i was kind of a little bit tired as i say i wasn't as focused perhaps as a lot of members of the crowd but i was still watching i was still listening and it just didn't kind of ignite a fire in me to be honest and um we had a little break then, you know, everyone kind of chilling out. I went outside and just sort of speaking to a few people. And there's quite, there quite a funny moment, actually, when I saw uh, Soul and Press just sort of chatting. I also had them on the show, so I sort of went up and said hi. And they both sort of said hi. I think, I think they just thought I was a fan, of course. And then I was like, oh, it's Tom from the podcast, you know, desperately, like, craving. And they're like, oh, what's up, man? You know, so it was nice to be recognised. And Soul said that he thought I was, uh, I thought I'd be smaller in person, which I wish I was, Soul. I wish I was, to be honest. But, yeah, it was good to see those guys. When I was there, I also saw um, Sean, who I've been speaking to a lot on Facebook. Really, really knowledgeable, old school fan. And we we agreed to i'm really excited actually because he's massively massively into especially um, in terms of battle up eras the wrc's uh, 2006 uh, actually for him precisely but 2007 he also knows a ton about so we've basically agreed to sort of do a two-part kind of you know investigation recollection like i love the wrc's i definitely know the 07 way better than the 06 but i love that style of battling I lo- you know i love how abundant there are there are so many fucking battles back then i was just watching this guy called ill spoken he battled saurus and neil Mackie. i can't remember who he's um, who the guy was with, but they, they were quite interesting. That was quite a fun battle. But yeah, so we're going to do a WRC thing. You know, it was good to go outside and see everyone kind of kind of chilling out and whatever. Get back in there. O'Shea Bobby Rex. This is the you know the main event to a certain extent in lieu of of the other ones. Oh, I should say by this point as well. I believe it was just after the Pedro J Dylan battle. Um, Briggsy announced that Kojay wasn't coming, so my heart sank. And apparently he was ill or something. And then there's been a little bit of back and forth on Twitter. And apparently he did have his round. Soul kind of called him out for it. Uh, check the battle resume my Twitter. I kind of retweeted as a, as a kind of little schoolgirl. Like, ooh, you know. And, uh, you know, 
Sol was saying that Koje's round, you know, round was good, and you know, it was a bit disheveled, but there were some really good bars there. So maybe he was ill. You know, I don't know. What it's not not my place to partition blame. It's just disappointing as a fan to kind of come out and really wanted to see Sol versus Koje because they're both fucking incredible. But there you go. That didn't happen. So there was that sort of sense of just, oh, you know, maybe this Bobby Rex O'Shea, this will be the greatest battle ever, and this will resurrect it. And it wasn't um, really. Like I thought, Bobby took quite sort of obvious angles um lots of kind of anti-scales anti-flossy sort of stuff he wasn't as charismatic i felt as he normally could be o'shea was great i thought o'shea really brought the goods here o'shea delivered um you know there's a there's a, there's a bit in the third when o'shea drops twisting your melon man it kind of dropped on the sound system and i was a little bit away from the stage but everyone sort of jumped on the stage and like, it was quite a really funny moment actually but it wasn't yeah, Bobby choked a little bit as well. I think he choked in two, maybe two rounds, one round, but it just wasn't the kind of fluid performance that I'd seen of him, you know, in other incarnations like the innuendo performance or, or a dank performance, you know, it just didn't really do anything for me. And it just added to this sense of just kind of um, lethargy again, just kind of the averageness. I don't know, just nothing was really popping. There wasn't battles that I've seen that I was really like G'd up by. And I think the vibe was the same, you know, I've seen a lot of comments online and spoke to a few people and just, it was just a little bit, you know, a little bit flat, perhaps. And we, and we kicked over to the next battle, uh, Dialect versus Lou Cypher, which is quite an interesting one, you know, on paper. I've got to admit, not a Lou Cypher fan. Just not never really vibed with the guy. And it's nothing personal, ever. Just, you know, there are those battlers that people just don't really, you know, enjoy watching, I guess. And Lou's just... It's too many homonyms, too many die stuff, too many kind of... I don't know, too much cheeky wordplay. That's kind of the wrong word for it, but just kind of rapscallion-y, kind of, ooh, kind of punny stuff. I thought Dialect was way better. I thought Dialect controlled the crowd brilliantly. There wasn't a grime second round. You know, he came with, like, this long uh, video game scheme that was really, really good and just kind of, like, partitioned it in a more interesting way, I felt. If it kind of directed his senses, you know, and he won. It wasn't, again, it wasn't a battle that I was, like, stunned by or something. I've definitely seen both of them perform better. I thought um, Lou against QP is actually a really good Lou. You know, I don't, I don't dislike um, his style. It's just not really my sort of thing. But yeah, I think Dialect took that. But again, it's just another battle. It's just kind of a bit like, yeah, next one, what's next? And what's next was Press Matter, which was you know, really, really excited for. Giant fans of these guys both. The fact that it was on beat was brilliant. Everyone huddled around again out of the innuendo thing. And the beats come on and there's no mic for some reason, even though there had been mics prior when like Young Guns and Innuendo done set. I don't know why they couldn't just pass the mic. I'm, I'm no fucking audio expert here. Who am I to tell them what to do or whatever? But yeah, um, there was no mics. And I was like literally two feet away from Matter and Press and I couldn't hear a fucking thing. Like, I literally couldn't hear anything. I think most people say that. If, like, if you were at the bar, you definitely couldn't hear anything. The beats were overpowering. But, you know, I was within touching distance of these guys. And I was just proper straining, you know. I, I think I think I said to press afterwards, like, I heard there was this long scheme. And I just heard the word Yamaha just sort of come out. And I was like, yeah. But that was it. You know, that was all I could react for. I wasn't sure what the setup was. I didn't know what the punch was. I just know that Yamaha was involved. And it was, yeah, uh, hopefully on camera... Um, due to the proximity of the facing mics, they were very close together, it'll, it'll, it'll come out well, and I really hope it will come out well, the beat's sounding fantastic, and I could tell just by watching their lips and movements and Ur's nodding head that the rhythm was, you know, exciting and substantial, but yeah, as a, as a, as a you know, as a bystander, I couldn't hear a fucking thing really, um, which, which was a bit of a shame, but yeah, but the, the, and that was kind of that really like I went outside after that, um, I think Raptors mirror match was supposed to go down, but didn't go down, there was also the Headhunters final with Zeus and Il Rollings, I think, um, which I've just read about. I went, I kind of went home soon after because I had to get the train and stuff like that. But yeah, I heard that wasn't great either. Um, so, so yeah. And then outside, I saw Innuendo battling Soul, which I think's on Viewpoints. Check that out. They were just having this kind of freestyle back and forth, which is pretty, pretty awesome to stumble across on. And yeah, that that was it. I mean, it's not it's not really Revival 7's fault, you know, that they had all these matches cancelled. It's a great shame, you know. There was so much good, especially Soul versus Double L. Like, that would have been so good there, especially, you know, but but regardless, these things do happen. It's very difficult to get to places and get people together, and that's just part and parcel of Battle Rap. You can't expect a full card to be an actual full card, and that's just harsh realities of uh, of, of this thing we love. But but nonetheless, shout out to Don't Flop for what was, you know, a slightly fun event, but a bit underwhelming. You know, you got to be honest with these things. It definitely wasn't something that really kind of, like, got me excited leaving the venue, recalling bars and stuff like that. It was more like... Oh, yeah, that one and that one. And, yeah, it was kind of hard to remember a bit. So, yeah, apologies if a little bit hazy there. But, nonetheless, um, it was good to go. It was good to see some people there. Uh, good to cap off the year of a battle event and such. But, 
yeah, it's been Battle Rap Resume. Quick little recap. Sorry if I've been <laughs> too negative here. Obviously, I love Don't Flop, but uh, like I say, you have to be truthful in these things. Please follow us at Battle Rap Resume. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, to the iTunes, to the podcast. And yeah, check out Patreon as well. Patreon.com forward slash Battle Rap Resume. Even if you're not going to donate, just check out the page. Um, there's some cool little prizes and stuff on there and some extra information about the show. And if you do want to support the show, it will be very, very appreciated. Even a pound. A pound gets you two new episodes. It gets you November Resume Review, and it gets you mine and Danny's 8 Mile Review in context of kind of Battle Rap 8 Mile's influence on battle rap and if you do say if you listen to this in the future and you know it's next year if you pay a pound you get access to every single you know bonus episode that has been on there kind of thing so yeah if you're supporting the show i love you if you're not i love you too thank you for listening please like please share and don't flop please don't ban me for the next revival for being so negative all right peace (laughs)